Hi, I'm Mrs. D. Math. Today we're going to go over some word problems on how to find circumference and area of circles in seventh grade math. So let's get started. So we've already been through a couple of videos where we learned the parts of the circle. We learned the formula for the circumference and the area and how to use them. So now let's talk about how do we use these formulas when we are given a word problem? And the first thing we need to do is understand these words and the key words that tell us which one to find. So just to review, the circumference is the basically perimeter of a circle. So that would be the distance around, okay? And the area is the space inside of the circle. So that's gonna help you kind of determine which words mean what. So just a few words for circumference. We could talk about around. This might also include outside. You might see words like the border or the edges. Sometimes you will see them telling you to find the rotation or even the revolution. So those are just some keywords for the circumference. Anytime they want you to find the distance around that circle, you're looking for the circumference. So let's go ahead and talk about some of the words that might have to do with the area. So a big one is when they want you to find square units, or maybe they want you to find the tile or the amount of paint to cover that area, so whether it's a floor or a wall. Another one might be when you're measuring for carpet or a rug. Either of those would be the area, and if we're talking about a circular rug or a circular room, or maybe we're gonna do patterns on the wall with paint, so any of those are gonna include where you have to find the area. Surface area is another one, maybe the cover or the face. Okay, or the space inside. So anything that determines finding the space inside of that shape is gonna be the area. And these are key words that you can use whether you're finding the area of a circle or a rectangle or any other shape for that matter. So just make sure that you're looking for the area if it's talking about the space inside and make sure you're looking for the circumference or the perimeter if it's talking about the distance around. For this first example, Jane is building a fence in a circular play space for her puppy. The diameter of the play space is eight feet. How much fencing will she need? And then also how much space will the puppy have to play? Sometimes you might need to draw yourself a picture. So in this case, if we have this circular play space and we know that the diameter, which is the distance across, is eight feet, that means that my radius is half of that, so that would be four. Now, we have two different questions here. The first one wants to know how much fencing is she gonna need? Well, the amount of fencing is gonna go around the outside, so this fencing is gonna be your circumference. That means that we also need to find how much space will the puppy have to play? Well, the puppy can play anywhere inside of the circle, so this would be our area. So that means in this case, I actually have to find both the circumference and the area. So let's go ahead and solve for the circumference first. So if I'm solving for the circumference, I can use pi times diameter because it does give me the diameter is eight feet. So that would be 3.14 times eight. So when I multiply these together, the circumference is approximately 25 and 12 hundredths feet. And this one you're gonna leave as feet because the distance around is not going to be a unit squared. It's just going to be the actual units. So now I need to find the area of this play space and I'm gonna use this formula up here. So 3.14 times the radius, which we already figured out was four. So four squared. That means that I am solving 3.14 times 16. So if I multiply 3.14 times 16, 
it's actually doubling what I multiplied times eight, so that would be approximately 50 and 24 hundredths feet squared. So there's the area. So this might be helpful not only in figuring out maybe how much money you have to spend on the fence, but also just to see if it's gonna be enough play space for that size dog. And especially if you don't wanna to have to rebuild the fence and you want it to be there as the dog grows older. So there are reasons why you might need to figure out this information. And this will help you figure out both the circumference and the area. So now let's talk about a different situation where we have a Ferris wheel at a state fair that has a radius of 32 meters. What is the distance of one rotation of the wheel? So in this case, we don't actually have our picture anymore of our circle. So let's go ahead and just draw a circle. And I know that the radius is only halfway across the circle. So they said this part of the circle is 32 meters. I need to find the rotation. So that would be around the outside. So this one I'm solving for the circumference. Since I know the radius, I'm gonna go ahead and use the circumference radius formula. And so that means circumference equals two times pi. And it doesn't tell me to use anything in particular, so I'm gonna use 3.14 times r, which is 32. So the first step, I'm gonna go ahead and multiply two times 32. I know that equals 64. So now I have to solve this by multiplying 3.14 times 64. That means that the circumference is approximately 294 hundredths meters around this Ferris wheel. So it's gonna go around the Ferris wheel. The circumference is 200.94 meters. Knowing the circumference could be helpful in figuring out maybe how long it would take for the Ferris wheel to go around one rotation if you knew the speed of the Ferris wheel. So there are reasons why you would need to know the circumference that would help with solving other problems. I'm Mrs. D Math. Thanks for joining me today on how to find the circumference and area of circles using word problems in seventh grade math. Have a great day. Bye.